What's up, Laker fans? The Lakers jumped to the fourth pick on lottery night. In this video, I take a closer look at one of their options there, Texas Tech wing Jarrett Culver. This picture made the rounds after Culver's Lakers workout, and while the camera angle certainly helps, he's still way up there. But while he shows this athleticism in games from time to time, most of his work is below the rim, and you don't see these kind of hops. More on this later. He's six foot six and three quarters in shoes and has a six nine and a half wingspan with an eight foot four standing reach. That's somewhere in between your average NBA shooting guard and small forward. He doesn't turn 21 until February and hasn't grown into his body yet. He can get pushed around by bigger wings and on switches as a result. But he has excellent speed and agility for his size, and unlike his vertical, he does a great job of applying that in games. This is his biggest physical advantage. This section is going to be broken up into two parts, skills and decision making. Let's start with his skills where his ball handling is remarkable for a player his size. He uses spin moves well and has a nice fake spin counter that helps him create separation here, leading to a bigger pocket to deliver his pass through. Here we have a cross between the legs into an inside out dribble into a hezzy before beating his man and delivering a dime to his big without even picking up his dribble. Beautiful play. Here's a left right cross between the legs, inside out dribble, right left cross between the legs and then a left right front cross to get to the rim. I really like him out of triple threat where he uses a low tight rip through and a quick first step to get by his man clearly. This is when he's at his best using his first step. He's mostly a below the rim finisher, cutting off angles and getting into the body of help defenders rather than soaring over them. While that type of craft is great, if I were a player development coach, I'd be excited about helping him learn how and when to plant one foot in the ground and elevate over defenders. He's already a good finisher, but if he can learn how to do that, he'll be a great one. His left hand is a bit weak on finishes. He uses it when he's supposed to, but he can miss some easy ones. Now let's take a closer look at the form on his jumper. He has an exaggerated dip after he catches it, bringing it down just above his knees. His set point is at the top of his forehead, which is fairly normal. But look at his offhand, which is at the top of the ball instead of on the side of it. As he shoots it, watch how his arms cross after the release. That means he's putting pressure on the ball with his offhand, which he shouldn't be doing, and that's going to impact his release. His feet are also very close together. You generally want a wider base than this, even with the close stance that he has, where his toes are pointed away from the hoop. He also releases the ball a bit late. He worked on raising his set point between his freshman and sophomore year, but he hasn't synced the timing on that with his jumper yet. The result is that late release and a lot of shots that hit the front of the rim. He's also inconsistent with his elbow, flaring it out on some jumpers while tucking it in on others. He was primarily a spot up shooter as a freshman and shot 38%, but that dropped to 30% in his sophomore year as his role change. These two attempts are what his jumper looks like when it's at his best. Now it's just a matter of doing this consistently. This is what'll determine his offensive ceiling more than anything else. 
He's really good at attacking closeouts, especially as a passer, so he'll have an advantage if he can get defenses to close out hard to him on a regular basis. He front rims a lot of pull-up jumpers, and that limits his effectiveness in the pick and roll. NBA defenses are going to run a lot of drop coverages against him, daring him to shoot while protecting the paint. I love his feel as a passer. He's accurate and puts great touch on the ball. When he's under control, he makes some brilliant pick and roll reads. This pass is the wrong read, but the placement is just absurd. His skip passes can be a little looping at times though. These will get picked off in the NBA, so he's going to have to put more velocity on them. Culver's a complete player in transition, able to lead the break, fill a wing, or make a good outlet pass to ignite it. Now let's look at the decision-making component of his offense, and that needs both time and work. We saw some impressive ball handling and craftiness around the rim earlier, but he doesn't always know when to use which tool that he has. He'll often throw a bunch of moves together and hope that one of them sticks, and when he doesn't get separation, he's too out of control to make a quality possession out of it. This is when he misses open teammates and forces up his worst shots. His shot selection is problematic overall though, because he takes a lot of break rhythm jumpers or contested shots from the perimeter with a lot of time left on the shot clock. Improving his decision making is going to be a big part of the first couple years of Culver's career. Three bits of context before we get into the meat of Culver's defensive game. First, Texas Tech switched most screens. Culver was solid at this, but it makes it difficult to gauge his ability to fight over screens, both on and off of the ball. They also had a no middle rule, where he was often asked to funnel guys toward his big rather than staying in front of them. You see this to some extent in the NBA, but not to the degree that Texas Tech did it. Lastly, he really competes. His mistakes are rarely for a lack of effort, and that's particularly impressive for a guy with a 32% usage rate. I like him best in a weak side free safety role where he can use his agility to jump passing lanes and help the helper. He has good instincts and an understanding of his opponent's passing rates. He 
He'd often leave his man to help on dribble penetration as his teammates would apply that no middle rule on the perimeter. He also has very quick hands which serve him well in those help situations. But he's so focused on his help responsibilities that he has a tendency to lose his man and get back cut. In the instances where he was squared up to his man, he has a bad habit of hopping around, making him vulnerable to changes of direction. This is the same issue that Kyle Kuzma has on the perimeter. Culver has talent as an on-ball defender, but he'll have to break this habit in order to tap into it in the NBA. He closes out quickly to the three-point line and slides his feet well in close and recover situations. but he doesn't really have the length to bother shooters if he gets there a little late. He's also prone to jumping unnecessarily on his closeouts, which breaks down the integrity of the defense and leads to open shots. Lastly, he's good on the defensive boards, battling with bigs on switches even if he doesn't always win, and drops down from the perimeter to help his bigs out by sandwich rebounding. I like Culver quite a bit. He's got an uncommon combination of size, ball handling, and feel as a passer on offense, while his physical attributes and competitiveness make him a nice defensive prospect as well. But while he has an extensive toolbox to work with, he doesn't know how to use it yet. It's likely that as a rookie, he's gonna be a guy who flashes brilliance on one play, and then he'll do something frustrating on the next two. I'd be dying to work with him if I were a player development coach, because he has so much of what you can't teach and a ton of room to grow in the areas that you can. From a Lakers perspective, he's a bit of an awkward fit with the current roster as another young player with questionable three-point shooting ability. He'd be the best pick and roll option amongst the young guys because he's a threat to score at the rim and an excellent passer. And he'd be a ton of fun in transition alongside other ball handlers who can defend and push the pace. I don't worry about short-term fit though because ultimately you draft a guy like Culver for the player that he's going to be in his third or fourth year, not his first. Two-way wings who can handle the ball are extremely valuable in the NBA, especially come playoff time. And Culver has the ability to be exactly that. He has all-star potential if he can become even an average outside shooter, although he has a good deal of work to do before he gets to that point. I haven't gotten into the Darius Garland tape yet, but I was very impressed by Jarrett Culver, and I'd be thrilled to get him with the number four pick. Laker Film Room is dedicated to helping you enjoy the Lakers and the game of basketball on a deeper level. If you'd like to support the work that we do, please click either the Venmo or Patreon links below. All right, that'll do it for this one. 
I'll catch you guys next time.